What's going on YouTube? Thank you so much for joining us again. Um, so today we're gonna to be talking about what happens behind prison walls. Now I know some of you might think where I'm going with this, we're not gonna be talking about that, but what we are gonna be talking about is uh, take prison like as an island. Um, so what we're gonna be talking about is who hosts that island. Um, we're not talking about the locals, you know, at the island because that's a whole different ball game. But what we're gonna be talking about is who is hosting the island? Who's hosting the parties? Who is that? And in this case, it's gonna be the FBOP, which is the Federal Bureau of Prison. Before we get started, let me actually clarify this. Now I know because there's a lot of people that like to compare my prison camp experience to Camp Cupcake and a lot of people say, look, I've been to Supermax, it's not like that. Look, every institution is gonna be ran totally different. Every institution is gonna be totally different. But what we kind of figured is this will give you guys a different perspective because there's a lot of similarities where I went to prison camp and where she went to federal detention center. So if you're facing one of those kind of situations, this is kind of something that you can hopefully relate to and get some information from. So the first step we're gonna be talking about is something we can all relate to is money. How much does it cost to send someone like me to cup, Camp Cupcake, sorry, or someone like her to a federal detention center? Well, I'm gonna let her talk about the numbers because she's a little bit better with the number of figures. It's actually pretty interesting. So our tax dollars go to house each inmate per, per year. And this comes straight from our court documents. So we're not making these numbers up. We're not pulling them out of thin air. They were definitely on our court documents. It costs taxpayers $3,025 a month per inmate to send them to a camp. Well, that rounds up to $36,300 per year. Now, re-entry centers, when you go back to halfway houses, that's still a substantial, substantial cost. That cost $32,309 a year. Now, what a lot of people don't really know is that halfway house, you're still considered under BOP custody. So um, if you are, whether you're in a prison, whatever prison it is, camp, prison, detention center, or you're in a halfway house or re-entry center, or you're under home confinement, all three of those categories, you're still under BOP custody. There is a third option, and that is supervised release or probation. Now, there's a lot of argument around it because if you're able to be in a minimum security camp with no gates, no locked doors, no really COs around, you're basically free, freely walking around a camp. Well, why are we spending upwards of $30,000 when they can be on probation? Well, the cost of probation per year is $4,369, so that saves a lot of money. Why is this topic so important? Like, why is this topic, like, what happens behind the scenes? Why is this so important to you guys, right? I'll explain to you why. If you guys are paying taxes out there, this is how much it's gonna cost you. So let's take Sheridan, where I was at, uh, a camp. Now, you gotta keep in mind too, I'm not talking about if you're a serial killer out there or someone serving life. I'm talking about a camp. A camp doesn't also mean that you have to be white collar. It just means that you have to be non-violent. So there's also drug uh, cases that are gonna be out of camp as well. If you're taking Sheridan, uh, where I was at, now this is post-COVID, I think Sheridan population was a little over 500 um, inmates when I first got there. So if you take Sheridan, you times that by the inmates, by the yearly cost, it's over $18 million per year it costs taxpayers for us to sit at Camp Cupcake. So the thing is, is that we all have the question is, Sheridan's not the only camp that's out there. There's a lot of camps that are out there. Actually, statistically speaking, 15.4% of federal inmates are actually housed at a federal camp, which that's equivalent to roughly about 24,000-ish um, inmates, which is equivalent to 882.9 million dollars just shy of one billion dollars it's costing federal sorry taxpayers or I guess yeah federal taxpayers I guess yeah taxpayers for people that are non-violent so that means no violence no sex crimes no murder no nothing these are non-violent criminals these are um, drug cases white-collar cases you name it that are non-violent 
costs homeless taxpayers cl a close to one billion dollars per year to sit out of camp. So minimum security camps are based on your pattern score, which means through the own BOP's assessment, there is a chance of little to no recidivism rate. Now, just because I went to a camp and just because she was at a federal uh, detention center, we both had the same pattern score. We we're both low risk, but because of the First Step Act, that's why she got sentenced um, or designated to um, a facility that was closer to home because you have to be um, you know within 500 miles of where you live now let's move on to first step act okay there's been a lot of articles that have actually been talked about this uh, the reason why is because there's a lot of lawsuits that are going to be associated with this and there's a lot a lot of lawsuits and um, a lot of uh, people actually suing the BOP actually inmates suing the BOP over this um, why is the first step act so unspoken about I guess that you would uh, phrase that this is why because it took the BOP no, no, FBOP, I call it the BOP. It's like the BOP actually 42 months to implement a law that, that was signed in over 42 months ago. Think about that. 42 months it took them to implement a law. That's not the best part. Not only have they just started implementing the law itself, they actually just recently started training their staff. Now, no other institution, or no, actually, I'm going to rephrase that. No other corporation would ever be able to get away with that. So again, if you guys are keeping track of this, is why this is so important and why this is something that no one really talks about is, one, you don't have to be a federal inmate to really care about this. If you're paying taxes out there, you should be really paying attention to this because why? It's your tax dollars. They're paying for inmates to sit in prison for longer than the law states that they should, which has cost you guys more money. So why is no one talking about this? So where is that left inmates? Well, the inmates are kind of now, I'm going to choose my words really carefully here, but the inmates have very limited resources once you're actually in federal prison. And what a lot of inmates are doing is they're actually suing the BOP and they're tying up the courts right now because they have really no other option. And uh, there's a lot of cases out there. And if you guys want, uh, definitely reach out to us. I can give you a lot of case law right now. There's a lot of cases that are uh, inmates are going after what is rightfully theirs, earned time credit. So let's really talk about case management counselors now. That's that's number three. Let's really talk about that because that's something that never gets spoken about. Now, go ahead and Google this. Google anything. Uh, go to Sheridan. Uh, do Sheridan Inmates uh, Handbook. And there's, I think, a handbook that you find. Now, when you read this handbook, you're going to think, oh, wow, all these people are here to help. Okay. Yeah, that's a, that is a huge thing that people don't talk about, right? Um, is... What is staff like? So you think, right? You know, I'm at Camp Cupcake. You walk in, there's going to be receptionists there. They're going to help you with your towels. They're going to answer all these questions for you. <laughs> no. It is, you are so alone. It is ridiculous. You are on a whole different planet. Like, I can't even describe to you. It's like a different planet. It's a different planet. So, right, you go through the book and you're like, oh, cool, I have a counselor, right? I can go talk to him or her, you know, anytime I want. Or I have a case manager that's going to sit down with me and go through all these awesome classes that they get to offer and they get to talk about my release date. They, they have something which is even called a team meeting, which per their handbook, that you sit down with your, camp, uh, with your counselor, a psychiatrist, um, who else? In your case manager. Yeah, you can't. I mean, where they talk about all your options. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, you got to keep in mind something. We both went to two different institutions. Remember this. So, I, hers, totally different. Like, I mean, her um, island, totally different. My island, totally different. But yet, the two islands administration was identical. Yeah. How is that? Why is that? Now, I want to be really clear about this. I'm not here to bash a BOP, but I want people to understand something. This is where you're going to be entering if you're going to be facing federal prison. I don't want to mislead you. I don't want to talk, you know, I don't want to say because I know there's um, some other information that's out there that you can take a letter to your case manager. You can ask for more halfway house time. You can do this. You can do this. Um, I don't know what prison you guys been to, but 
let me tell you how my team meeting went. And now when I say my team meeting, I'm also comparing all 500 other inmates that were also there with also four different case managers and four different counselors. And also hers was pretty much exactly the same. So here's how my team meeting went. You timing this, you get paged, right? Page, you come into the office. Park, report to so-and-so's office. You know, you get all dressed up because you gotta get dressed up. You can't go to your case manager or counselor's office. You get all dressed up because you're all nervous. You walk in and the person goes, Park, sign here. Very first time, I'm not making this up, that I went to my counselor. He's, he asked me a sign saying that I agree to my restitution payment that was in full. So, like most of us, right? When you, we have a document in our life, we wanna read it, right? So, I pick up this document and I kid you not, within five seconds I picked it up, he grabs it out of my hand and says, you don't have to read anything. Sign there, inmate. Sounds like a good camp cupcake, right? <laughs> They're treating me just like an American. So, no, they, um, now my team meeting, yeah, they don't go through classes, they don't go through that stuff with you. There's no psychiatrist, I never even met a psychiatrist. It's in the handbook that I'm supposed to, never did. Um, did you get to meet? I did because I was on oh, the panel for did. suicide prevention, so I went through training for that. Okay, so she did because of the particular class that she was in. Um, but classes and stuff like that, did they go over classes? And... No. Okay. Actually, my case manager told me that the classes, it was all inmate.com, the classes don't go towards anything, and just to leave him alone. Oh, inmate.com. Mm -hmm. Let's dive into that inmate.com it is a common phrase that is among all inmates nationwide ask anyone that been a federal prison they are going to say inmate.com what does that mean now i think there is actually a real website that's out there but you don't have access to the internet when you're in federal prison so what is inmate.com inmate.com is gossip just gossip it's gossip it's uh, so-and-so heard this or um, I'll give you an example when COVID was going on everyone was saying they're shutting down camps everyone's gonna go home I'm like you're really gonna send 24,000 people <laughs> to home confinement I don't know about you guys but the BOP is not in business to um, I guess follow the rules I guess so to speak or do the right thing um, no the BLP is in business for business they are a corporation just like any other corporation they're there to make some money and with your tax dollars they're not gonna be sending 24,000 that was um, what we call inmate.com so everyone is running around my camp they're gonna shut down camp no stay away from inmate.com stay out of the gossip yes there's a number of times that there were people running around with a lot of false hope getting excited over nothing just because they heard something from another inmate or um, getting information from the outside that was incorrect so it's really important to just stay focused and stay away from inmate.com and boy was inmate.com flying during COVID I mean flying and especially with the CARES Act too so another thing that's not talked about uh, to the public CARES Act now CARES Act obviously is um, a common broad thing that's going across you know everything with COVID you know it's helping businesses you know local businesses but also the CARES Act also implemented um, or incorporated uh, certain things for prisoners too when COVID first started with uh, the BOP they were really slow to react um, a lot of things they did also contradicted um, certain things like I'll give you guys examples um, a lot of prisons had to sleep head to toe mm -hmm. um, yes yeah, there was a do. two okay you have to sleep head to toe because I guess you just don't catch an illness if you're sleeping opposite directions when you're in a tiny little space sharing the space and you're all sharing bathrooms you're sharing toilets you're eating together but I guess if you sleep head to toe it's saving your life in my particular circumstance we were locked in the room together yeah for me <laughs> I was seven for me I was sharing as uh, like a wing with 40 something guys and we're all crammed in a wing um, but they also took away our uh, there was a total I think of like seven phones or whatever it was seven or eight phones they took out every other phone because social distancing but yet 
there's a line of 50 people that was standing outside all crammed together waiting for the phone then when you get in you need to do social distancing so everything contradicted each other um, which then also led to many lawsuits you guys can also google that too uh, Sheridan had a lot of lawsuits not actually even just for inmates but a lot of staff members actually sued uh, Sheridan too because they were saying it was unsafe um, for them to even do things you know there as well so to date, um, actually at the beginning of this year, so January, um, there was over 275 deaths um, that got reported in the BOP due to COVID. Um, and that, and there was also seven staff members that also died from COVID too. And then of course, the illness itself, um, you know, is affected. It, it, because I mean, you gotta think of it as like a Petri dish. I mean, you're living in such close quarters, even though they're practicing social distancing. Um, <laughs> But you're living in such close quarters um, that if one person gets sick, it's like a petri dish. It's just gonna spread. Um, Forbes actually did an article about this. Um, I wanna say it was back in 2020. It was a really interesting article. Um, they talked about the living conditions, especially even like where I was at, like at a camp, that you're just living on top of each other or something like in a cell or something like that, um, that you're living on top of each other. So if one person gets sick, everyone's gonna get sick. Yeah. And being in a higher security facility, you are not allowed to have chemicals. So it was really interesting that the COs had in their office one bottle of disinfectant spray and they would bring it around about once a week. So we're living in these conditions on top of each other, well, feet to head. And yeah, just remember, you gotta practice that <laughs> we because gotta practice you, our you'll distancing, die. But we don't even have proper disinfectant. So I went on commissary, I bought Dawn dish soap and cleaned everything with it. So when all this really started, uh, the BOP was running around like a chicken with their head cut off. Now, they weren't talking about this with the public, but inside prisons, it was a utter chaos. Um, I'll give you an example that uh, when this all started, they were just starting to send people home. The one guy was actually in his 50s, probably the best health of his life. We actually call him Baywatch. Um, good looking guy, um, in shape, jogs, I don't know, 15 miles a day. Um, Total, totally fine and I think he sold like six years left on his sentence uh, they sent him home um, but then yet guys in wheelchairs in their 70s and 80s they were not sending home because they had no idea what to do staff had no idea what to do it was just utter chaos now in all fairness to them they, they didn't really know how to handle this um, but yet what I don't understand is when there was a tool that they could use, which is called the First Step Act, which was passed years prior, if they only took the proper steps to train their staff, they could actually send people home under a law that was passed years ago, a lot sooner, that could have been home and it could have saved a lot of people's lives and it could have saved a lot of illness. Now, there was a, a great Forbes article too that um, is also talking about how, especially Sheridan, I don't know, Sheridan really got a spotlight on this, um, but a lot of BLP, they started um, misleading the public. They started misleading the public saying, look, we're sending so many people home, right? We're like, we're sending all these people home under home confinement. Here's what they did not want to tell you guys, um, is that all the people that they sent home were scheduled to go home. So, so think of it like this. Um, so think of it like of a hundred people were scheduled to go home under home confinement, um, and they already had their out dates. But two of those people, what they would say is, hundred people went home under under the CARES Act, which was a lie, because maybe two people went home under the CARES Act, while the ninety eight were already scheduled to go home anyways. And again, this is not something I'm making up. This was actually a study that was done that Forbes actually did it, that the BLP, I think, reported that they sent from like, uh, it was like March 2020 until earlier this year, something like 24,000 people they have released under this whole home confinement thing. Home confinement is owed to a lot of these people already. But what they're doing is they're grouping it all in. And statistically, what they're saying is that I think only um, probably less than 9,000 of those people were actually qualified for the CARES Act. Not qualified, but were released under the CARES Act. However, the BOP is trying to group it all together, saying, look at us, we did such a great job and sent 24,000 people home. And if you're following this, this is the BOP. This is who is supposed to be helping inmates be honest. So what happens when you actually get home and you're under home confinement? Because I was actually released due to the GARES Act. I got half of my sentence under home confinement. So 
when you get home, it doesn't get much easier with your case managers. It's very confusing. They do not very responsive to answering your questions and there's really weird stipulations and rules you have to follow and with COVID on top of it there was things that weren't allowed like grocery shopping or going to church or anything recreational it was just going to work and back so I ran into it a lot of times when I was trying to go to work and my schedule somehow disappeared because my case manager did not file it so there are still frustrations once you're home now, we just want to make very clear, I'm not talking about the court system. I'm not talking about uh, probation, you know, under the court system, like the U.S. Uh, probation officer that's through the courts, like before and after. We're talking about when you're under BOP custody, because keep in mind that even though that you are under home confinement, you are still under BOP custody until you actually go to probation that's a whole different entity. So that's why it's, it's like, just think of it as like their own little island and they operate on a different set of rules itself. So I want to read you a statement that Forbes recently said about the BOP and it says... Yeah, it was like a journalist that actually just it did a study uh, on this and this was about a month ago. So this is pretty recent too. So the Forbes article says, the BOP is an organization that needs new leadership, is poorly managing the pandemic in its institutions, is behind in implementation of the First Step Act, has terrible relationship with the union, experiencing staffing shortages, is short on qualified medical staff, has poor morale, and many staff calling in sick in multiple cases of staff corruption. Now I want you guys to make a notation of this. This is not my opinion, it's not even her opinion. We're just telling you guys from our experience of what we went through through the BOP. This is a whole separate journalist that wrote about general the BOP itself. And there's a key note that he used there, organization. It's like they're a company. So until someone holds this corporation, organization accountable, we're never gonna change it. It's not gonna change until someone else is gonna do it. So the purpose of this video, yeah, it's to tell you guys the truth about the BOP, things that people don't talk about. And ultimately, look, it's, it's your tax dollars, uh, tax dollars, sorry, that are paying for this. So until there's someone or, you know, that holds them accountable and um, requires change, you know, within the prison system itself, um, what can we do? And the key is to work on yourself. If you are facing going to prison, the first thing you gotta understand, it's, it's a whole different planet, okay? So everything that we see out here, everything that we experience, everything that we are used to in our daily life is a totally different planet. And guess what? When you're there and you have a complaint with the BOP, no one to complain to. Now, um, because the BOP is its own separate entity. It's, it's away from the courts. They can do whatever they pretty much want to. Um, there's only one person that can hold them accountable and that's the attorney general. Um, but they've kind of got in trouble in the past too. So um, the key is that if you're facing going to federal prison, the key is that you want to work on yourself, okay? You're not going to change him. You're not going to change that. So step one, use that time to better yourself. Don't allow that place to change you. Make that place work for you. Get out there, exercise, read books, take classes, whatever classes they offer, which trust me, and <laughs> um, just make yourself a better person. Appear and in here. That's what you can do. Don't expect anything. That's, that's another key. Stay away from inmate.com. Stay far <laughs> away from it. I'll tell you that I'll, that I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. Like I had a moment when I was there that I did fall into that. I fell in a very negative kind of spot. Like, oh, the BOP, blah, blah, backwards on purpose. That's what we call it, backwards on purpose. Um, and, um, but don't, don't do that. Surround yourself with positive people. Surround yourself with positivity. That's what you want. You want positivity. So stay away from the negative thing and don't expect anything. Meaning, look, there's always a new bill that's gonna come out, whether it's First Step Act, whether it's CARES Act, whatever it is. Your outdate is your outdate. You know that little outdate that you see posted um, on the BOP's website? That is your outdate. No changing that, that's it. If that date gets better, awesome. 
and that's what you want to work for. You want to work for something better, but don't expect anything new. Don't expect it. That is your outdate. That's it. Better yourself. Continue working forward. And guess what? If you get a better outdate, awesome. Congratulations to you. That's what we want to start teaching you when you do start working with us is, um, you know, what to do when you uh, walk into that place. And the last piece of advice we have for you is to work with a life coach. Or, Which we have an awesome life coach on our team. Yes, or a consultant. And get your head right before you walk into those doors. Because the biggest thing is you want to make sure that you're never going to walk back into that place ever again. Because somehow you end up there and that's what we want to work with you. Is How did you end up there? Because you never want to go back to that place again. So use this experience. This is a once in a lifetime experience use it to your full advantage and but don't expect anything from the BOP and that's what we can work with you on that's where a life coach can work on with you is that when you're there you want to be in the right mindset here and you want to be in the right mindset here now remember nobody can change their past but everybody can start from right now and make their new beginning so the question is are you guys ready for your new beginning <laughs>